Hello, hello, it's Tom Fitz here. Welcome to part 14 of 25 of the College Entrance Test Review. Credits to the Review Masters for providing me with these items. To continue, item 53, a triangle has the following points as vertices, 0, 0, 3, 4, and 6, 0. This triangle is, and we have four possible uh, choices for um, the triangle. Now, uh, note that we're given with a scalene triangle, an isosceles triangle, a right triangle, or an equilateral triangle as the choices. So it's very logical for us to get the sides and then see what triangle it is. So let's try to get um, the side lengths of the triangle. So I've written, I've drawn a triangle here, and let this be A, let this be B, let this be C. So let's start by getting A. So we just, we're going to get all of these via the distance formula. So to get the value of a, we, we squared the difference in x, so uh, 3 minus 0, that's 3. So we're going to write 3 squared, plus uh, 4 minus 0, that's 4. So we're just going to write 4 squared. Now for b, it's the same thing. So 3 minus 6, that's negative 3. So 3 minus 6, that's negative 3 squared, plus 4 minus 0, that's 4 squared. And then for C, it's just a horizontal line. So we just uh, realized that it's from 0, 0, to 6, 0. Therefore, we're just going to have C equals 6. Now we're going to simplify A and B. Note that 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's equal to 25 squared. So we can write this as square root of 25. And square root of 25 gives us 5. Now similarly, this one is equal to 25 as well. So it's 9 plus 16, just like the previous one, so we're just going to write square root of 25, and this gives us 5. So we now have the sets of sides, so it's 5, 5, and 6. So not all are the same, so we have, an, we have not an equilateral triangle. It's not scalene since two of these triangles, I'm sorry, two of the sides have a length of 5. And between an isosceles triangle and a right triangle, it will be an isosceles triangle because it's not a right triangle. So just to verify, 5 squared plus 5 squared equals 6. If it was a right triangle, then this would be satisfied. But 5 squared is 25, and then 6 squared is 36. So 25 plus 25, 50 equals 36, and that's absurd. So this is not the case, so it's not a right triangle, and therefore it must be an isosceles triangle, just from looking at these sides. Now, another way to easily notice that there's an isosceles triangle is to note that 3 comma 4 is in the axis of symmetry of this triangle. So the line that goes through the middle, which is the line x equals 3, that's the line of symmetry with respect to this, uh, this triangle. So since th this point, 3 comma 4 is on this axis of symmetry, so we can conclude it's an isosceles, isosceles triangle. So there's a lot of ways to do it, but we're going to get the same answer nevertheless. Item 54. The diameter of a wheel is 6 centimeters. How many complete revolutions will the wheel make if it rolls a distance of 108 centimeters? I said 108 pi centimeters. So it's very important to note that if we have a circle and then a point here, oh sorry, a point here. So as the circle rolls, for example, to the right, this point is going to go around the circle and the next time it hits this point again, so the next time it's going to be uh, the next time it's going to be back in its original position would be one revolution. So the circumference of the circle, the circumference of the circle in short, so that will equal one revolution. So one revolution, so I'm use right here, one revolution, it's just actually the circumference, which is given by pi times the diameter. Now the diameter given is six centimeters, so pi times six. And that gives us 6 pi, and don't forget the unit, centimeters. Now, that's one revolution. So all we have to do is just uh, divide 108 pi centimeters by 6, centi by 6 pi centimeters to know what is, or how many revolutions does the circle or the wheel make. So 108 pi, we're going to divide it by 6 pi over here. And this will tell us the number of revolutions. So I'll just write revolutions is equal to 100 pi over 6 pi. Now, obviously, the pi's will cancel. So all I have to do is divide 108 by 6. So we can try to do that. Very simple. 108 divided by 6 
So just do division, we're going to have 1, 6, we subtract 6 from 10, it's going to be 4, 8, and the 48 is divisible by 6, it's going to give us 18 over here. So the number of revol revolutions would be 18. So using, this using these four choices, it must be choice C. Item 55, length, width, and height of a large box are thrice, are, are thrice those of a smaller box. The volume of the large box is, now we have um, some number of times with respect to the smaller box. Now let's say, uh, by the way, uh, the length and the width and the height are not given, so they're technically variables. So we can try to implement the trick that we can substitute values since no, nothing, are, nothing are given and there aren't really restrictions as to what these should be. So let's just say the smaller box, it has uh, dimensions 1, 1, and 1. So length, width, and height all equal to 1. Now the large box would have 3, 3, and 3 since the length, width, and the height of a large box is thrice those of a smaller box. So the dimensions 1, 1, 1 will become 3, 3, 3. So we're just going to apply the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism. So the volume is simply L length times width times height. So to get the volume, we're going to multiply 1 times 1 times 1. For, so for the smaller box, it's going to be 1. And then for the bigger box, it's going to be 3 cubed. So 3 times 3 times 3. That gives us 27. So just by comparing these two numbers, the bigger box has a volume which is 27 times the smaller box since 27 is 27 times 1. So we can cross uh, A, B, and C now and then we're just going to answer choice D. Again, another example that we can substitute values to help us understand the question easily and to answer the question easily. Last item, number 56. On a number line, if one endpoint of a line segment is at negative 12, as seen here, and its midpoint is at negative 4, as seen here, then the other endpoint is at somewhere, uh, so we have four options here. Now, it's very nice that we have a number line here for reference, so if we can, if we can try to draw, then it would be nice since there's a visual representation for us. So uh, one endpoint is at negative 12, which is to the left of the midpoint given, so it, we would expect that the other endpoint is to the right of negative 4. Now in fact, since uh, we have a midpoint here, whatever we add, so whatever is the increment or the number added from negative 12 to reach negative 4, which is 8, since negative 12 to get to negative 4, you're going to move 8 units, or just you're going to add 8, so it's going to move right 8 units. So we're just going to do it again to find the other endpoint. So from negative 4, I'm going to have plus 8, and then whatever this number is, and we can solve it easily, it's going to be 4. We know that this question mark would represent a 4 on the number line. So it should be 4, so we have choice D. So hopefully you guys learned something new from this video, and I'll see you in part 15. Bye-bye!